Kevin McLaughlin considers himself fortunate. When Carillion, Britain's second biggest construction group, collapsed in January, his decorating firm was left £200,000 out of pocket. His business survived, but many others were not so lucky. So far, more than 2,000 of Carillion's 43,000 strong workforce have lost their jobs. There's responsibilities here, and, there were, and we had responsibility for people that's worked for us for years, and thankfully we could see them through. It's just a shame that Carillion, at no time from what I've seen, have acted responsibility at a very high board level. Are you sorry to Carillion employees? In a searing report published today, two select committees accused Carillion's management of presiding over a rotten corporate culture and described its demise as a story of recklessness, hubris and greed. As Sky News revealed, the MPs are demanding that former bosses face probes into whether they should be banned from boardrooms. Here we've got a board of directors stuffing their mouths with gold and allowing huge numbers of jobs to go down the pan and a pension deficit to escalate. Carillion was one of the UK's most important infrastructure companies, responsible for scores of British hospitals, school and road projects. At one point, it was valued by the stock market at more than £2 billion. The MPs pinned the blame for its collapse on these three men. Philip Green, the former chairman, who stands accused of being an unquestioning optimist. Richard Howson, the CEO for more than five years. His misguided self-assurance made him part of the problem. And Richard Adam, the former finance director and architect of Carillion's aggressive accounting. The select committees say the sale of his shares soon after his departure were the actions of a man who knew where the company was heading. None of the trio would be interviewed today. A spokesman for Mr Green said the report fails to understand and accurately reflect the true, more complex picture of events and insisted that Carillion's board always sought to make decisions on the best available information and with the best professional advice. After a last-ditch plea by directors for a state bailout fell on deaf ears, it was left to British taxpayers to pick up the pieces. The only winner from this corporate calamity may end up being PricewaterhouseCoopers, which, as Carillion's liquidator, will ultimately hand Whitehall a bill for tens of millions of pounds. To date, £150 million of public money has been spent maintaining services run by Carillion. And the financial problems facing other government outsourcers, such as Capita and Interserve, suggest that the lessons from its collapse have yet to be learned. Mark Kleinman, Sky News.